Hey guys, sorry I'm a little late. Uh, Bora was going over. So hopefully we'll get those guys in a little bit here. All right, get my performance window back open here. Casey, I am super excited about your zero backend thing. Yeah, cool. I, uh, I think there's some good stuff that we can do with that. Um, both just for optimizing the beast front end itself, but also for performance work on the HTTP3 front end so that we can do kind of apples to apples comparisons uh, against that. I remember like almost 10 years ago, I asked you Huda if we could do that for RGW. And he's like, oh, it'd be too much work. And it's it's really, really exciting to see that you guys actually did it. So that's, uh, yeah, that's great. Yeah, I could, I kind of hacked that together as an example for the H3 front end itself, but um, realized that I could generalize it as a RGW REST API, and I think it's a good idea. I, I might be exposing my ignorance here, but I don't actually know what H3 is. Oh, that's the HTTP3 uh, quick front end? Oh, that thing. Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we've, we've been trying to do some performance work on that and um, been kind of tricky to tease out the issues there, but this should help. Okay, cool. Well, yeah, um, and I, I noticed there was some stuff uh, regarding HS Bench in there, but I wasn't paying super close attention. Is there anything... I can do there that would make it easier for your testing? Um, I don't know. The, I think uh, you, might, you might ask Mark Kogan about it. Sure. Will do. I'm I'm glad to see that you guys are using it. That's that's I'm, it's good. This that's useful for other people besides just me. So glad glad it's, yeah. it's at least seen some use. <laughs> well, when the the other alternative is Casbench, it's kind of an easy choice. Yeah. Right. Right. What what happened with um with the mini IO warp thing? Did that actually was that useful? I think so. I know that Adam on our team has been using that. Okay. I've seen bug reports of uh, upstream users that are using it. So. Okay. I wonder if I should be looking at that as another thing that we try to integrate into CBT. It'd be nice to have more options. Well, in any event, cool. Re really neat. All right, uh, let's see. Next, uh, Igor, this is uh, your PR for... Is it just me who lost Mark? No, I lost him too. I was checking my internet connection. Hey, you're back. Uh, sorry, I guess my network is glitchy today. Um, Igor, do you want to talk about your, your uh, writable file allocate PR? Uh, well, that's a fix that I advertised a while ago, which makes SST files less fragmented. Uh, so, yeah, it looks like we uh, didn't write uh, RocksDB interface properly, and hence we get when it flashes SST file, uh, it provides a hint to preallocate up to 64 megabyte. But we missed that before, and this resulted in a pretty fragmented SSD files. So, believed. 
Well, in, in my experience, it is definitely improved the file layout, given that there is enough continuous space. Do you, do you think, Igor, um, is this thing we should try to backport? Yeah, I think it makes sense to backport uh, given it's pretty trivial. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a pretty small PR, and I was thinking it'd be kind of nice if we could get this into Reef, maybe. Yeah, no problem. Good. Cool. All right. Um, maybe I'll I'll try to test that too. Uh, next, I think the you also oh this is from no sorry this is from Adam uh, harmonizing log read and write modes. Um, I saw you approved that though Igor. So uh, I don't know if it's actually a performance thing, but I figured it. it I don't think it's. As much uh, relation to performance, it's mostly to fix a uh, pretty annoying issue with uh, OSD being unaccessible after MKFS. So we we could sometime uh, corrupt some data structures on disco due to improper uh, uh, due to non synchronized read and writes. Yeah. We the only reason I guess I was thinking about oh I labeled this as performance is because I think this does change the behavior a little bit, right? W regarding when we use buffered IO. Right. I'm looking at right now. Uh, well, it mostly changes um, buffer treats for uh, uh. FI node. Uh, so for BlueFS log, which is actually yeah uh, occurs well re reads from this file occurs on log replay only. So it, yeah, exactly. So it, yeah, you're right. It's 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 only only impact startup, right? Yes. Yeah, looking at the comment from Adam. Okay, so yeah, it probably doesn't need a tag then. I just didn't didn't see the comment there. Okay. Um, well, moving on. Uh, Casey, I saw that you merged the QAT batch PR, so that's exciting. Uh, for anyone that can use it, I suppose. Um, Next, the RocksDB store. Uh, uh, well, actually, Igor, it looks like two of yours were uh, both the apply RocksDB delete range threshold on the fly, and then also don't use real whole space iterator for prefixed access. So exciting that both of those got merged. Uh, yeah, so the first one is just uh, a more convenient way to adjust settings. Uh, so we can do that on the fly for our experiments. And the second one, I'm not sure about the regular operations, but uh, we use uh, this whole space iterator for uh, some, um, maybe for FSCK and some other stuff. So I could yeah. see pretty significant uh performance impact when doing full scans on on on, on Rose DB. Uh so yeah. I've I've seen it too with the whole space iterator when we when yeah. we are doing anything that uh requires uh you know seeking to a certain place. Uh, yeah so uh as far as I remember it if, Text us if we perform uh, scanning through default column family uh, or through column uh, through prefixes which belong to uh, default column family while still having a huge amount of data. At, for instance, some up 
uh, column family and there are no much sense to, to scan them. Uh, prefixes do not match the criteria, so yeah. Sure. Well, then uh, the last one I've got here was just close by the bot. That was, um, uh, I think it was maybe just some some changes that Gabby wanted to make to uh, the no column B uh, code maintaining this free list type when when in that mode. Um, can't close by the bot. Hasn't been touched in quite a while. So uh, we'll see if he reopens it or not. Maybe maybe not. Um, I don't get the sense it was really that big of a deal. Uh, there were a couple of updated PRs. Uh, Matan uh, has uh, introduced QA level crimson, crimson performance tests. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how that works. Um, then we have RuxDB store use bounded iterators and ARM range keys. So this is another one from you, Igor. Yes, right. So. No major updates here, actually. So it was just I think, some commands from Laura. I think uh, the the thing is, it's in QA testing now. Yeah. So hopefully, it'll get merged soon. Right, and this might cause some. Uh, this might improve uh, some cases. Uh, indeed, when we perform uh, bulky. That remote map removals. So, um, yeah, using these iterators might give some improvement. Cool. All right. Um, next, we have uh, the D4N uh, work for RGW. I, AC, I think this is a pretty a lot of comments in this PR, right? Pretty big. Yeah. Looks like it, I think it just got more updates that maybe uh, got it back to being a pliable. Do you know, is that anywhere close to, to ready or is that still just kind of actively being worked on? There's a lot of ongoing work. Um, that PR itself might be close to being mergeable as a first step. Okay, cool. All right, and then the last one I've got here is, I guess is my PR. Uh, this is for enabling TC Malik in C star, uh, so Crimson basically. Um, Basically, the the errors that we are we're seeing, uh, the leaks that we were seeing previously, we we think that they're just the same ones that we've already suppressed in uh, Valgrind, and we have to do the same thing for uh, ASAN. Um, I think that Radix said that he uh, tested it and and it worked, uh, but. I didn't. I would. I did. I meant to ask him in the core stand up whether or not that was with um, uh, TC Malik enabled if he got it to pass or, or not. So uh, we'll have to do some follow up on that. But good news is that it's being worked on again, and uh, hopefully we'll we'll get curves in with TC Malik uh, in general here. So that, that'll be a really big win both for performance and for um, memory usage, especially when using Blue Store uh, with Crimson. So. Pretty exciting, and uh, and that's all I've got for uh, PRs this week. Was there anything I missed from anybody? Oh, I see the comment uh, from from Joshua here. Yeah, yeah, that it is exciting, isn't it? Yeah, I guess we'll see what that does to byte versus IOPS amplification in the things that we're seeing right now, but. I'm still excited. I didn't realize that we actually already essentially had an implementation of allocate. It just wasn't activated. Yeah, I, I don't know that I did either. I just want to be honest. <laughs> Good job, Igor. I, uh, Joshua, I had mentioned to Igor earlier that, yeah, I, I want to get this on my list of things to test. 
see if we can get that into to Reef before before we we release it. Yeah, I think once it's merged, I'm just thinking we don't have great staging environments still. I don't know. Maybe we have some staging models now that we understand what to look for that we could use to understand what the trade-off will be in our environment. Yeah, we'll see. Cool. Cool. Yeah, any any kind of real testing we can get in will be super, super helpful. So looking forward if 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 uh if that's a possibility. Do you need this PR in into um tautology testing? Yeah, we should get into tautology testing and um I was gonna try to maybe do some uh uh, just kind of one-off testing with this too, possibly. But it, it, th the cephalocon's coming up really fast, so we'll see. I mean, uh, yes. We're we're gonna probably be going there early, so um, I might be out for part of August or April. What's the PR um, number? Just so I can put it in my queue for testing. Yeah, one second. Let me get that to you. Um, it is. Oh, uh, thanks, Joshua. Oh, we get it. Oh, thank you. Awesome. Thanks. I'll just put that in my queue for testing, so it gets priority. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. That's it's it's not a big change, but it potentially could be a a really nice change. As these sometimes seem to be. All right. So, anything I missed from anybody? Well, let's move on to discussion topics then. Um, first order of business, Blue Jeans is going away at the end of the month, I guess. Um, so, we, we discussed this in the, the Cephal Leadership meeting uh, yesterday. Uh, I think the plan right now is to move everything over to Jitsi instead. Um, that was what Mike advocated. So, uh, I'm guessing that's what we'll do for this too, uh, but we at least have a, a little bit of time here to figure it out. So um, just wanted to make sure everyone knew. Uh, it's, it's not hard to use, um, it, it works pretty well. I had some issues with Firefox with it previously, so maybe be aware of that. It was like, I couldn't hear random people, um, but in, I'm, I'm using Brave now and it's working well, so. It's working for me in Firefox for a while, so uh, I don't know. Yeah, it might just be whatever version I've got in my system. This is like Ubuntu 22, 2004? 20, I think it's 2004, so Firefox might be like really old. I don't know. Yeah, I think I've used it with that version as well, exactly, as well as whatever this is on Fedora. Oh, okay. Well, it's also, this <laughs> the system, has I think, has been upgraded from 1604. So, you know, there's some gremlins looking in it. Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, I guess we're still figuring out the recording aspect of the, of the Jitsi stuff, so it might be a manual thing. Yeah. Josh, I think I've upgraded this system since the Ink Tank days. I think I'm actually still on the same base OS that, uh, that I was running back then, just, you know, upgraded oh, wow. periodically. <laughs> <laughs> nice so old system. I, Glad it's still running. Yeah, to some extent, I guess the 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 Ubuntu upgrade process works because technically this is still running. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. Moving on then. Uh, reef performance. So I've been doing a lot of work on reef performance over the last year or two. Or year or two, week or two. Jesus, sorry. Um, so the gist of it is that um, after lots and lots of uh, work trying to get our NVMe drives working right again, uh, but ended up requiring firmware upgrades. Um, we're now, our, our test cluster is working pretty well. And uh, I was able to tease out some some interesting differences. Um, so random writes is, is the interesting case, which it usually tends to be. Um, in stock Quincy, or mostly stock Quincy, let's say, uh, we're seeing about 750,000 random write apps on that cluster with 3x replication. With Reef, we see around 800,000 random write IOPS, so it's an improvement. But if we apply the RocksDB tunings from that article last fall, 
to Quincy, then we get about 850,000 random right eye apps. So even though Reef is faster, um, Quincy is actually faster when we apply the same tunings. I, um, I suspected it might be due to the RocksDB upgrade. So I, I recompiled Reef with the old version of RocksDB from Quincy and it did not help, or at least it didn't help much. It was a tiny bit, like uh, maybe maybe like 810 versus 850 for, for Quincy with the tunings. So I believe we may actually have a real regression uh, buried somewhere, but it, it was, one being masked by the the drive firmware uh, first, and now is being masked by the the RoxyB tuning changes that we made. So um, I can probably devise a bisect to go back and figure out what it is. Um, it's not a big regression, right? It's like I don't know, six or seven percent maybe. Which when whenever it's that small, it can be tricky to track down. But uh, I may give it a shot. We'll see. Um, the good news, though, is that all of these numbers otherwise are looking really good. Um, you know, just just looking at Reef on its own with that uh, those those tuning changes, were were faster than we've ever been before for small random writes. Small random reads were faster than than Quincy when I looked. Um, everything else was faster or equivalent. Um, RGW was looking pretty good. Um, it's not uh, showing some of the same uh, things that we had to track down in specific days. Um, it's maybe just not quite as efficient as Nautilus was, but Nautilus was was kind of a, a really good high point, and it's still looking, you know, pretty good. So um, anyway, I'm going to try to get all this stuff published and written up, uh, but uh, uh, maybe maybe not until next week. We'll see. Uh, and that's that's really all I had, guys. Um, I'll open it up. Is there anything people would like to talk about this week? Or questions? Did you say, on... did you say 850,000 IAPs, Mark? Is that, how, many, yeah. how many OSDs was that? 60 OSDs, 850,000 okay. random write apps with 8x, or 8x, 3x replication. <laughs> nice. That's fantastic. Yeah, and uh, about 4.5 million random read IAPs. So, not bad, right? Yeah, that's great. We just burned a lot of CPU to get it. <laughs> oh, and also for IO depth one, like sync rights, uh, about 0.4 milliseconds. Oh, that's great. Uh, for rights, that's better than we've been in the past. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. What was that? What was yeah. that like before, in, like in Quincy? Uh, actually, I did test Quincy, and Quincy was pretty, uh, pretty, pretty similar. So um, I don't think we've okay, so actually proved it dramatically. Yeah, it was, it was, yeah, maybe, maybe Quincy or maybe Pacific. Um, hmm. I do remember a while ago, maybe a year or two ago, I did tests like this, and it was like maybe 0.8. We were a little under a millisecond. Now we're like, at least in, on a brand new cluster, right? Brand new cluster, we're we're dramatically under a millisecond. <laughs> Right, right. Brand new is always the uh, exception as well. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So you know, but but the, the the good thing, right, is that it means that the stack's capable of it. So. That's, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we we've sufficiently reduced latency both client side and server side enough to to get comfortably under a millisecond, you know, very comfortably under a millisecond. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, exciting. And yeah, you once mentioned we have like C store, it'll be even lower. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, 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 a while ago, back when we were starting C store, I, I told Kefu that I wanted to to give them some challenge by making keep making Blue Store better. So, um, <laughs> I think we have. <laughs> um, Mark, you mentioned uh, issues with NVMe drives. Is this? I'm soon uh, problem we had a while uh, ago. Or... Correct. Yep, the same Samsung drives that we were seeing with the uh, the um, allocator strange allocator behavior issues. And now it's a different issue. Uh, it was a different issue, right? Well, maybe. I, 
You know, I the behavior I was seeing is that one of the OS, one of the drives, all of the drives actually were a little bad, but one of the drives was specifically bad where um, uh, it would be fine for a little bit, and then I'd see really, really high queue wait times on device commits. Like F syncs were taking a long time, and just you know everything was was slow. And I wonder the the suspicion I had previously was that um, we were like that they've got some kind of cache or some kind of like faster flash cells that we were like burning through, and then we reverted into some kind of slow state. And I still wonder if they're related to each other. What I'm seeing now and what I saw before. Okay, so and firmware update uh, resulted. Seems to have, um, but my question is, will it come back? Maybe I only temporarily fixed it. Mm -hmm. but, Which drive is this? This is the uh, PM eight ninety three. Oh, the Samsung. Yeah, Samsung PM eight ninety three. It's like a generation or two old now. Um, they're they're very very reasonably priced for being a data center class drive. Um, Were you seeing the reduced performance after doing random I/O to it? When I was doing random I/O to the whole cluster, I would see well, okay, random I/O would show these oscillating periods of very high uh, 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 queue wait times and and uh, I think yeah, service times for for iOS. But even even when I was doing like large writes, you could see that um, that it was it was keeping up, but it was the you could see that the queue wait times and service times for those iOS were a little higher than the other ones. So basically, any write traffic was ranged from a little worse to a lot worse than the other drives in the cluster. Gotcha. I was just wondering if you were hitting a fragmentation condition. I mean, maybe would have would a, just doing a firmware upgrade. Do you think? I mean, maybe they they fixed some way of dealing with it or something. But yeah, I mean, the firmware upgrade could have done smarter defragmentation on the back end. Um, yeah, like maybe they were deferring some work that they shouldn't have been. But I don't know. Like I I've, I've seen such a wide variety of behaviors in terms of what the drive does under fragmentation, even from the same manufacturer, just between generations. Um, yeah. Once the drive gets fragmented, it's amazing how much performance dies, essentially. Sure. Yeah, it could be. It could be that if the upgrade firmware upgrade hadn't fixed it, I was going to do basically a secure wipe on the drive and right. just see what, what happened. Um, yeah, I mean, in, if you want, like, really easy in FIO is you just run 4K random writes for, like, a few hours just to fill the drive and then watch your curve and see what happens. And then you can run like one meg or four meg writes and then watch to see if the performance goes back up again. And if it does, it's probably like you can kind of see what the drive is doing from a fragmentation perspective under those two scenarios. Yeah, you know, actually, I don't think it was fragmentation because okay. in the course of these writes, I tend to do a lot of like big sequential writes before doing the 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 4K random writes. And it it was just like, yeah, it was it was bad. It was always bad. Even, yeah, even the four I mean, megabyte rates looked bad. Yeah, but this was like I'm with Ceph on top, right? It was, that's true. Yeah, so if Ceph is giving it fragmented allocations, then like large rates isn't necessarily going to help. It depends on how fragmented the allocator was. Yeah. I mean, it's on a brand new cluster, so the new rights should be should big. Be yeah, should be fine. Yeah. yeah. yeah every, every single test suite builds a new cluster. Hmm. Yeah, hard to say. And Samsung doesn't even make that firmware upgrade available unless you like go know like the magic people to talk to, who then talk to other like hidden people inside Samsung. So that's fairly normal for DC drives, I think. Ah, uh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Um, well, the good okay. news. Yeah, Sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was just saying. Change topic. Yeah, I, I don't have much to say. I was just going to say the good news is that um, now we know to look for that because even when I upgraded the firmware on that one drive, it helped a lot. And when I have upgraded the firmware on all of the other drives, it actually got us like another like 5 or 10%. So 
we we know now to be paying really close attention to this. And that was all I had. Um, I just put a PR mark in chat. Um, this is the one I mentioned to you, I think, on Slack last week about um, disabling the dmcrypt work queues. Yeah. And uh, if I remember right, you said that was, like, amazingly good, right? It seems to be, yeah. Um, especially for large write performance, it seems to make the biggest difference. Um, I did leave some comments in the PR though, so like I don't and and the submitter did say that they have to update it because there's some issues with what they did. So it's in by no means in a shape to be merged right now, but just from a performance perspective, I just wondered if it should be on your list. Absolutely, it should. I don't know how I missed that one. Let's get that in. I'm just gonna throw it into the new ones, even though this is technically kind of old. Uh, Probably saw stuff volume and then was like just ignored it after that. Which you know. yeah, it's not it's not the normal bear for this uh, discussion. Yeah. Did, um. Did you have numbers like comparison numbers? Is that I I I wrote some in here uh, in the ticket. Um, the uh -huh. I think the biggest win is it. it like when we're doing four meg write load tests on a fresh cluster, um, it basically cuts the CPU usage in half um, that's when using this really test. Um, yeah, but that's, that's only I, yeah, I only tested the disabling the work queues. I have issues with how they are doing the sector stuff. Um, so I don't know in the end whether they're going to want to actually just break that up or even just abandon the sector overrides because once I, I'm assuming Reef is going to be on CentOS nine. All right. I think someone just fixed something that related to actually making it run on CentOS 9. <laughs> I just want to see, because I think CentOS 9 comes with a uh, script set up uh, 243. And script setup 2.4 will automatically do sector size um, detection when setting okay. up new DMCrypt devices. So I don't know. I'm kind of wondering if they should just drop that part and just focus on the work part. That sounds like a. I think that's a good idea. It, it, at the very least, split this up. They're this maybe too busy otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is that? Do you want to? Do you want to recommend that in there, or do you want me to come in? And um, I that? did point out the crypt setup behavior in here, uh, but I'll uh, I'll make it explicit that like. By the time this gets merged, we're probably just going to encrypt setup 2.4 anyways, at least in mainline. Yeah, yeah, maybe recommend to them in the in the PR just that it'd be it'd be nice to split this in half and have just the 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 work queue stuff and then the the sector stuff as a separate thing. Okay, yeah, I'm writing that up right now. Cool, awesome. Um, quick question, Igor. I was trying to read through your change to implement uh, allocate. Does that reset a larger file size as a part of the allocate call? Uh, so uh, the allocate is called by uh, RocksDB. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and we just didn't write the method properly, so we didn't use that hint from RocksDB, and instead it was like one meg and something like that. Or half a meg. Yeah, I guess I'm just wondering if, you know, just thinking from the perspective of the IOPS amplification, if it updates the file size, that helps with the IOPS amplification bit. But I was just trying to figure out if we did update the file size, if we're zeroing the um, mapped pages here or not. Mm, no, I think it's really completely unrelated to uh, previous your previous issue. So it's about writing SST files mostly and making gotcha. them less fragmented. Uh, well, gotcha.
Yeah, I was just curious. All right. Anyone have anything else that they want to bring up this week? Oh, actually, I do have one other thing. Uh, since Alex is here, um, uh, yesterday in uh, on Slack, uh, we were talking with David Orman about uh, Time to Live for RocksDB, and I'm tempted to actually we we added a, I think a six hour uh, time to live maybe for uh, Reef as part of the other RocksDB settings that we changed. But uh, David, when he actually was testing this, saw that they didn't need it at all anymore. Like all the other changes are like completely fixing everything. And so um, I've been tempted to maybe take it back out and not set it as a default for Reef. Um, yeah, so my tests were clearly not known enough to trigger TTL. Given that the, and this is amazing, that the performance is linear across my test, it tells me that we're not accumulating tombstones like we used to, because uh, my test iterates a lot. So okay. I'll be fine with that, yeah. Ah, oh, that's awesome. That's super exciting. I, I think, like, on our internal Slack, my first reaction was, whoa, when I saw linear performance <laughs> DB for the first time ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think Reef's going to be a good release. I'm excited. All right. Good, good. So, okay. Um, I think maybe we just let it stew a little bit more, but if, if everything's looking good, both with you guys and with um, and with David Orman's group, and, and we're still just seeing nice behavior like, like this, maybe we take it back out again. Um, I know David's also 100% in favor of just, like, turning on uh, compression. Like LZ4 compression for Roxy because they're they're using it now and it's like no performance loss with like like one fourth the space usage for DB. Um, so like you know he's he's very very happy with it. Um, I mean when I tested it with NVMe drives on our test cluster, it didn't actually hurt performance really. I mean there was like one case for reads where we were seeing like a five percent drop or something, but it was offset by the huge you know, space usage uh, improvement that, you know, and, and write amplification improvement actually on the, the NVMe drives, right? Um, so, you know, I, I don't know, like I, we, it's a big, it's kind of a big change, right? But there's a part of me that almost wonders if we should be trying to migrate toward that as the default. I don't know, maybe not for Reef, but, ah, z standard, yes, yes. Do you, do you want to be the guinea pig? I'll uh I'll take you about <laughs> time to evaluate it. Our our time waxes and wanes, so sometimes we do have time to go and try these things out. Sure. Sure. I could if I have time I can try it too. I just uh, uh we'll we'll see. <laughs> I'm I'm kinda of running around like a, a chicken with my head cut off right now, trying to do like five different things at once and doing them all kind of poorly. <laughs> so <laughs> all right um yes very good very good that was really the last thing i had so uh going once anyone have anything all right well have a great week everybody uh it's been fun and uh see you next week yeah, thanks Bye. So